plates set up like this, that's going to give us a certain amount of capacitance. But if we were to put another one here, another one here, sort of get them stacked um, and they, like a disc pack, they'll go in between each other. So this is a way in which you can uh, get more capacitance in the area. Well, if you can't just set up so one of these sides is movable and you could push this thing together, then you're going to get more area. You'll get a higher capacitance. You could then pull them apart to get less. So you could make a variable capacitor out of this technique. And that's commonly done. But we've got the parallel plates on this device, and there's a, a shaft, and you can use a screwdriver or a knob then to rotate it. Right now it's so tight I can't rotate it by hand. Uh, but <clears throat> this then would have been used on a uh, common application would be uh, a radio where you've got the tuning knob for it. The uh, tuning, you can use capacitors and inductors and it's specific frequencies on those depending on your values. You get what's called resonance, or it's going to respond to a specific frequency. So by changing the capacitance, you can then make it resonate at different uh, radio stations' frequency. So that's how you tune the radio to the station that you're after. Uh, modern radios don't use these anymore. They've got solid-state replacements. But this is the classic way in which radios are tuned. <sighs> In the textbook in chapter 10, it does have a little uh, descriptor and little hand drawings of some of these different types, and they'll talk about the different uh, features of those, but uh, without the fact to see what they really look like, it's not uh, that important. But now that you've seen it, uh, it's a little bit easier to relate back to what they're talking about. Another type of capacitor that I didn't give an example of is this pendulum capacitor. It's got a lot of the properties of uh, electrolytics in that it's uh, got a lot of capacity for volume on it, but it doesn't have a lot of the stability problems that electrolytics, but it's not as large a capacity as electrolytics. So this is uh, one of the real popular types, the ceramic disc and electrolytics. Those three constitute probably 95% of the capacitor types you'll run into.
you want to run through uh, the material we went through last time just to get it reinforced because we're going to be using it uh, for quite a few different problems. We've got our standard circuit with the battery, resistor, capacitor, and the switch. We're going to be interested in the time varying uh, characteristics of the capacitor voltage and the capacitor current. Uh, in the last class, someone asked me, you've got a lowercase values here, you know, what's the difference between that? Uh, typically, uh, uppercase uh, values mean it's going to be a DC or a constant voltage or current. If you get the lower case, it's going to mean it's a time varying or an AC signal. I'm not very consistent on uh, going to that convention, but that's really what the convention should be. So if you're ever confused and don't know what I'm doing on that, uh, ask for clarification. We're still working with DC right now, right? Well, we're working with the DC battery, but we're working with the transient or time varying responses. There's our capacitor equation in three different forms. Okay, we're going to start off and we're assuming there's no charge stored on the capacitor. No charge on the capacitor, the voltage is going to be zero. We've got an open circuit, there's no current. We close the switch, now we have a um, closed circuit. Well, the voltage on the capacitor is a result of having charge on the capacitor. Charge has a, uh, as a physical uh, element. It takes time. You can't move it in zero time from one place to another. So as soon as we throw that switch, the charge is still going to be zero. Therefore, the voltage is still zero. So at this point, with the switch closed, the voltage is zero. But if we do... <coughs> Critical voltage will be a 10 volt rise minus IR minus zero equals zero. Therefore, the voltage across that 1K resistor um, is going to be the full battery or 10 volts. So if we get 10 volts and 1K, uh, Taylor, and what's my current? 10,000. Yep. Yeah, uh, sorry, 100. Is it, is it, yeah. Okay, yeah. 10 milliamps. 10. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we jump right up to uh, 10 milliamps. So uh, 10 over 1K, K is on the top of even though. Okay. So we jumped right up to 10 milliamps. So the current can change instantaneously, but the electrons aren't change, moving instantaneously. Okay, so at this point, we do have current. So we're dumping charge on here at a rate of uh, 10 milliamps, which would be 10 millicoulombs per second coming on to here. So the voltage is going up at that uh, rate. Okay, since the voltage went up, that means there's now less voltage across the resistor. So that less voltage, less than 10 volts over 1K, will give me less current. Okay. But I still have current, so I'm still putting charge on there, but now I'm putting it on at a lower rate because my current is not as high. So since I'm not putting it on as rapidly as before, the rate of change of that voltage is going to decrease. But the voltage still did increase, therefore this is uh, decreased on the voltage, so the current will decrease. But again, it's not going to decrease as fast. And this is going to continue on with the voltage going up until uh, we hit 10 volts here. If we have 10 volts and 10 volt rise, 10 volt drop, there's no voltage across the resistor. No voltage across the resistor, that means the current is zero. If the current is zero, we're not changing any of the charge on there, therefore the voltage can't uh, change, so it's just going to stay like that forever. 
So that's our hand waving derivation of what the waveform should look like. This should end up, in my example, of 10 volts, which is my battery. Robert Carnazzo, what math expression equation would give me something that looks like that? Any idea? Jeremy, any idea? Would it be something like the square root of y plus x or no? There's a couple possibilities. Or just the inverse. So you just flip the denominator. Oh, the like one over x type mm -hmm. thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other suggestions? Log. Log. Mm -hmm. um, that, not the log, the other thing. Exponential. Exponential. Uh, yeah. So it looks like a decaying exponential. And since this is a natural phenomenon, uh, natural log, uh, e to the x type things, makes sense that it's going to follow that. So uh, let's go with the e to the, e to the x. But since it's decreasing, it's going to be e to the minus x. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to keep defining on that. Okay, it's a function of time. So we've got to get t into this thing. So we have e to the x minus xt. Got to figure out what x might be. Well, if we have a large number here, that's going to have it go down quickly. Uh, now our resistors, if our resistor is large, that's going to slow this whole operation down because we don't get charge going as fast. So it makes sense that R on the bottom would give us sort of what we want. Okay, a bucket or a capacitor here, putting electrons in. We've got a bigger bucket. It's going to take a lot longer to get the voltage to rise on that or uh, change the current. So without going through or deriving the, the differential equations on this, uh, e to the minus t over rc uh, looks like a good bet on this one. OK, at t equal to infinity, We have to evaluate e to the minus infinity. Uh, Gary, what e to the minus infinity evaluate to? Uh, maybe closer to zero. We go to zero. e to the minus infinity is like one over e to the infinity, like one over infinity. So yeah, that this goes towards zero, which yeah, this should do. So that value is going to be working. Uh, let's try t equal to zero. E to the minus zero is what? E to the minus zero. What's the, oh, e, to the, e to the zero. One. It's going to be equal to one. So this would evaluate to one and take equal to zero, but what do we want it to evaluate to? Sorry. Yeah. What do we want it to evaluate to? You said it goes to one, but what's my graph say? It should be at t equal to zero. Ten million. So we need a scale factor. Ten milliamps. So that expression at least hits the boundary condition for us. And it is actually the correct uh, equation for this. 